Hello, today I'm going to walk you through making these funky flower earrings. I wore them to a festival this weekend and I got so many compliments. Uh, you could find the pattern for this earring in my new book. Um, there are 20 patterns in there and today we're going to be following this one. You could also buy the pattern on its own and not have to purchase the whole book. Um, it's available on my Etsy shop and on my website and I'll paste all the links below. Um, so let's get started. Okay, so I'm using size 11 Miyuki Delica beads. I have uh, thread guards here. I also have lever back ear wires, which are my favorite kind of ear wires to use, but you could use whatever kind you have on hand. I have a uh, fireline beading thread and six pound weight. Um, I'm actually using the clear color and not the smoke. And I have Miyuki beading thread and um, I have it in white. And then I also have this KO thread. I just want you to see they are the same thread. Um, it's a pre-waxed beading thread and I use that for the fringe. I also have my pattern here and I just want to show you um, when we're working the first row, this is how we follow the pattern. So we're going back and forth on these rows and the first four beads is what we're going to start with, which is the first four beads in this first row. Okay, so we're going to get started by picking up those first four beads, which are white in the case of this pattern. And I'm going to slide them down towards the end of my thread. It's about a four to five foot piece of thread. Try not to make it too big if you're just getting started. I'm going to loop my needle around and come back up through the first two beads. And when I pull that tightly, you have the four beads sitting next door to each other like this. And this is the beginning of our ladder stitch. And now we're gonna bring our needle and come back down through the second two beads, like so. And now we have these four beads sitting like a little ladder, the first two rungs on a ladder. And then I'm gonna pick up the next two beads in my pattern and then I'm going to come back down through those second two beads. Pull that tightly. And then I'm going to come back up through those two new beads I've just added. Like so. And now we're going to do it again. We're going to pick up the next two beads in our pattern. And then we're going to come up through the last two beads we've added. So we're looping around and we pull those tight. It looks like that. And then we're going to finish that loop by coming back down through those same beads. There we go. Let's take a look at that again. Two more beads. We come down through the last beads. Pull that tightly and then you come back up through those same beads you've just added. And you're starting to see this little ladder formation coming together. Hopefully by now you're getting the hang of it. We're gonna speed through the rest of this row. When you get to the end, meet me back here, there are 17 sets of two beads in this row. Um, and when you get to the end of it, we will start our brick stitch. So make sure you're following your pattern. Keep comparing your work to your pattern and make sure your beads are in the right place. And meet me back here when you are finished. Okay, so here we are. We finished that first row of ladder stitch. You should have something that looks like this. You want to take a look and compare it to your pattern. Make sure it looks right. And now we're gonna get started on that second row, um, which is gonna work in the opposite direction. And so I'm gonna pick up my first four beads in that second row. And I like to turn my beadwork around so that I'm always holding it in my non-dominant hand and working away from that. So I find it easiest to, to do it that way. So I'm picking up my first four beads I am sliding my needle underneath the second thread bridge from the outside, like so. And then I'm going to come up through the second two beads, bring my needle up through the second two beads, and then 
down through the first two beads. And then up through the second two beads again. And now you will have your first two sets of two beads completed for that row. And they should be sitting like this. And for the rest of the row, we're just gonna add two beads at a time. So I pick up my next two beads in the pattern, slide my needle underneath the thread bridge. And then I come right back up through those same two beads. And you are done with that. Okay, pick up your next two beads, slide your needle underneath the next thread bridge, and then come right back up through there, through those two new beads. It's only the first um, four beads that are the most complicated. The rest of this row is pretty easy. Just starting the brick stitch can be a bit tricky, and I will show you that one more time. But I'm gonna keep adding two beads at a time, I'm making sure to follow my pattern, slide the needle under the thread bridge, and come right back up through those two beads. So you're gonna keep working this row to the end, and when you get to the end of this row, meet me back here, and I will show you again how to start a row of brick stitch. Um, and just keep following your pattern. You know the rows go back and forth, but when I'm showing you here, I'm always going to be holding it in the same direction. So even though the rows go back and forth, it looks like they're going the same way, but I'm just like flipping my work over so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, and I think it's easier to hold it that way as well. So I'll see you back here in a second. Okay, so here we are. I have finished my second row of brick stitch. And I just want to go over starting a row of brick stitch with you again. So you see, I flipped my work over here. So I'm working in the same direction. I pick up four beads. I slide my needle underneath that second thread bridge. And then I come up through the second two beads, down through the first two beads, and then up through the second two beads again. And starting the row in this way just keeps your thread hidden. If you were to start it with just adding two beads, you would have an exposed thread on the outside, which doesn't look nice and sort of weakens your work. So you finish that row and then meet me back here and I'll show you how to start a new thread. Okay, so here we are. I have run out of thread, so I just wanted to go over that quickly and show you what I'm gonna do. I weave my old thread down into the work Make sure you leave yourself enough thread so that you have thread to work with and, and anchor down. Um, you don't want to work into your very last centimeter of thread. So I found two sets of two beads next to each other and I am just wrapping around them to create some tension. And then I'm just going to go down a couple more rows and then I'm good to clip that thread. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that. And then I will grab a new thread and thread that needle and start down a couple of rows. Again, you're gonna anchor that thread by wrapping around two sets of two beads. And then you want to get your needle up to where you would have been starting your next row of brick stitch, which is right there. And now we can continue on. Okay, so now I'm just working brick stitch as I would have as if the thread never ended. It's important that you don't try to work with too long of a thread, especially when you're getting started, because you're just gonna end up with knots and frustration. So better to work with a shorter thread and know how to end and start a thread. Okay, so here we are at the top of our pyramid and I'm adding my last two beads here. And then I'm gonna show you how to add the thread guard. Now, if you don't have a thread guard, you could add a loop of beads at the top, but I really recommend using thread guards because it just gives you an extra professional finish and it strengthens your work. So you're gonna take your thread guard, bring your needle up through one side of it, and then bring your needle down through the other side and the outside two beads in your top row of your pyramid there. Make sure your thread stays in the little channel of the beads 
speed guard or thread guard. Otherwise, it won't be guarded. <laughs> and then I want to come back around through that thread guard. So I'm going to work down one more row. See, this is an example that I have way too much thread here. It's too long. And <laughs> if it was shorter, it'd be much easier. So now I've gone down one. I'm going to come up next to the neighboring beads. And then I'm just working my path up back up to that uh, outside edge of the thread guard. So I could loop around one more time and make it extra secure. So there I am in the thread guard again. There we go. And then I'm going to come down the other side of it. And then back through those two beads on the outside edge there. So first through the thread guard, make sure your thread stays in that channel. And then through those beads. And then from there, I'm just going to work my needle down into the beadwork. I'm going to find two sets of two beads to loop around and anchor um, my thread as I've done before. And then after that, I'll be able to clip all of the threads and we'll get started with the fringe. Um, and also to note that that first tail you have, if you haven't gotten rid of it yet, the very first tail from where we started, you also want to thread that um, piece of thread and weave that back into your work as well. So once you get rid of all of those threads, meet me back here and we will take a look at the fringe. Okay, now we're ready to add our fringe. We take a look at your pattern. There are two ways you can read the fringe. You could look at it visually and follow down each row. But I've also added in my book the word patterns for the fringe, which is the way I prefer to do fringe. Um, so it will just tell you the numbers of each bead so you don't have to sort of count them on the pattern. And so now I'm using my um, beading thread. And for this, you want to stretch it. It's You'll see it's sort of curly. And you want to stretch those curls out so that your thread is straight and the stretch isn't going to come later and mess up your work. So always, always stretch out your nylon thread. And then you're going to begin your thread by anchoring it. And so again, our anchoring technique is two sets of two beads next door to each other. And we loop around those about two times. And you want to give it a good tug and make sure things are feeling secure. And then you're just going to work your needle down the outside edge of your pyramid till you get to the bottom. And you want your needle to exit the first two beads and your row of ladder stitch at the bottom, like so. And now we're ready to add our beads. So we're looking at our pattern and we're going to start counting out beads and we're going to add them on. There they are like magic. I didn't want to make you sit while I counted beads. Um, and then once you've added your beads for your fringe, you're going to pick up your end beads. In this pattern, the end beads are three beads. Sometimes um, it's just one. Um, for this particular one, I'm using three. You'll see that in the pattern. And then you bring your needle through the beads of the fringe. Like so, and through all of them. Um, I've got through most of them. There are a couple more at the top there I have to hit. So I'm going to bring them through there and then through the first two beads in that row of ladder stitch, just like that. And then I'm going to bring my needle down through the neighboring two beads in the row of ladder stitch. And then I want to sort of pull on that fringe, make sure it's not too tight and not too loose. And then I'm going to pick up my next row. There we go. There are the beads for the next row. I pick up my three end beads again. And then I'm going to take my needle through just the beads of the row of fringe. And get all the way up to the top. And then through those two beads in the row of ladder stitch. And back down through the neighboring two beads in the row of ladder stitch. There we go. Again, check your pattern. Always uh, take a double look, make sure things are laying out the way they're supposed to be. I'm adding the third one now. Um, I think you're probably starting to get the picture. I just wanted to show you here. Normally I do it with it lying down, um, which I find to be much easier. Um, it's just for the videos. I like to pick it up so you could see. 
And here I'm sort of adjusting those bottom three beads because you want them to sit like a little triangle. So make sure when you're adding fringe with the three beads at the bottom that your bottom beads are sitting properly. And yeah, like that. So you want little triangles at the bottom. And then keep sort of checking your fringe each time. Make sure it's not too stiff. You want to have a nice like drapey loop to it. Um, so you keep working on that. When you get to the end, we will um, finish our fringe by weaving it in. See you in a second. Okay, so here we are ready to finish the fringe. The same, you're probably like over this by now, but again, we're gonna weave our thread in. It's important because if you don't weave your thread properly, things can come apart. So we're gonna weave this thread up and I'm just gonna find two neighboring beads and I'm going to go around them a couple of times and um, secure that with the tension. With my fringe, I'll probably, and because this is the last sort of thread to secure in the earring, I probably will find two separate places where I'm weaving around to just make sure it's extra secure. Um, and I know that the, the, the fringe isn't gonna go anywhere. Um, okay, so that's it. You finish that up. Get rid of all your threads, make sure everything's secure and meet me back here and we will add on our ear wire. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to add my ear wire. Mine have a little open loop at the bottom, so I'm just going to gently open that with my pliers, um, add it onto my thread guard, and then close it back up. You could do the same thing if you have a French ear wire, you would add it in the same way. You could also add the ear wire when you're adding the thread guard, but I just always forget to do that for some reason. And there we go, we have these super cute earrings. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this. And if you check out my book, let me know. I hope you'll leave a review. I've worked really hard to try to make the patterns easy to follow and the instructions easy to follow. So um, I'm excited about it. And thanks for stopping by today. I hope you'll subscribe and see you soon. All right, bye.